Uh, till now, we received just two questions, so we go now to the Q&A session. So please, if you have uh, still have a question for one of the speakers, uh, put it in the Q&A box and we will uh, try to answer your question. Uh, I will share the, the questions that's easier for you to answer. Okay, I hope you can see them, but I, I, will, uh, I will read them for you. First one for Maria. Uh, can you also account for changes in the surrounding of the building and, uh, for example, increasing greenery using cool surfaces when creating the local weather file? Is this possible? And if so, have you explored this in any of your publications or research? Uh, thank, thank you very much for this question. I mean, it's uh, uh, it's very important of how we move to 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 improve things, and uh, certainly it is possible because uh, the um, uh, tool that we use, the urban weather generator, could um, uh, take uh, into account what. Uh, uh, difference uh, such uh, the greening, for example, it considers different kind of uh, trees, uh, different kind of uh, height of the trees and everything and vegetation. So in an intervention study or in a, a mm -hmm. paper intervention study, it can be taken into account to see what, what difference uh, this will make. And, and, and the same for um, uh, cool uh, uh, facade or roof uh, surfaces as well. And also uh, in um, pedestrian, um, in pavements as well, that might bring uh, an, um, uh, a benefit. But did you simulate uh, this in the urban weather generator or not? Uh, no, and this I was going to move that I haven't done that. I haven't done that. So uh, the study stopped to identify the problem than trying to propose ways to, to, to improve uh, the problem. Uh, although in another um, uh, uh, project that uh, uh, has been funded by EPSRC in the UK, we looked at the urban albedo and how mm -hmm. Uh, cool surfaces, especially outside in the pavement, could increase pedestrian comfort, uh, for example. And uh, uh, in the beginning, we thought, uh, of course, yes, it will, but it is much more complex than that, especially in mm -hmm. urban canyons, because uh, we have uh, multiple reflections and then it might make the problem worse than, than better. So in answer to the question, yes, we can explore it using the tools. And no, I haven't done that in the way that the, the question is phrasing it. So thank you. Okay, thank you, Maria. Uh, Adam, I will move to you. Uh, the first question is, do you think it's fair to compare the, the SPF factor of ventilative cooling with the SPF of mechanical cooling, for example, heat pump for thermal comparison? And why or why not? Yeah, um, I've been thinking a lot about that question now the time to think about it there. Um, I suppose the question of fairness really is um, is a complicated and, and perhaps even a, a, it's, it's one that's, that we may not be able to answer today. But in, in terms of it, if a, if a VC system is able to cool a building for an entire year and it is not relying on any other supplementary systems, then I, I don't see why you couldn't consider a comparison with a heat pump uh, to be fair. Additionally, um, if it's considered like as part of a combined system, which I've seen some examples, and uh, that's also an, an avenue to include it. Uh, where I think if it enhances in another system, would be that heat pumps or a ground cooling system, and um, then I think that that is also fair. I think the important part is that we do include it uh, where it is intentional. And uh, I think I think maybe people look at the NVC SPFs and they think they're very high. But I mean, if you're a person and you open the window, then obviously there's a very high SPF. And um, so I, I think I think we do need more guidance and information. Um, I think we need more guidance and information on like what the manufacturers of actuators are providing in terms of energy input so that we can provide a, a more accurate assessment for NVC. But at the moment, I think there is enough evidence to suggest that NVC or mechanical ventilative cooling 
can be calculated and measured in the in the real world and i think that that is an example of one where we should include it and it would be fair to include it and um, so i think that's where it is at the moment mm -hmm. okay thank you and then a second question from a person who missed a little bit of information so maybe it was already in your uh presentation what does the base temperature mean so in this particular example, the base temperature effectively is um, is a cooling balance point, and basically we use it when we're, when we're at design stage primarily, or we're looking at cooling demand, and it's basically the outside temperature where above this temperature we, there's cooling needs. Uh, typically, it's like um, 18, for example, in Europe, mm -hmm. but different member states will use different values, and and uh, there's a method for calculating the base temperature as well, which is something that I think we should be looking towards for low energy buildings. Because these can have tend to have lower base temperatures, so above those low thresholds, lower thresholds, they expect cooling. Now it's the same that you use in the cooling degree days, maybe. Yes, yeah, yeah. yeah. same okay. thing. Yeah. yeah. And uh, what is your threshold that you use to evaluate indoor overheating? So in this particular example, I think even mm -hmm. if you were to use category one of um of the of the of the EN standards, it would still be very limited overheating. But in Ireland, um, it does a few different metrics. It can be above twenty eight or above twenty five, um, and I think all of those metrics that fall. Uh, in this particular example, the school isn't even occupied during um August and September. So August and July typically is low occupancy. So in those periods, even like it's quite limited overheating. Mm -hmm. And the, the next I can already answer partly. So the access to the slides will be within one month. And for your publication, maybe you can answer it better. Um, yeah, so I sent actually sent the publication on to that attendee already. So I've, I've just sent it on to them. So they, I sent the publication uh, for the for our previous work on um, on the base on the, the this feasibility assessment that we did in, in 2023. I've already sent that to them. So um, you can find it, find it online on my on my Google Scholar. And if anyone has any questions, I'm happy to send them information. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then indeed, maybe the basic question: What do you mean by <laughs> renewable ventilated <laughs> cooling? <laughs> Yes, it's a great question, and I, I when when I I think the what I what I mean, and I, and this is maybe maybe this is perhaps a little bit confusing, but what I mean here is if you look at any EU directives, for, and like the reason why you compare with heat pumps is because in Ireland there is grants given for heat pumps because they are considered to be renewable, mm -hmm. and even though even though they're not like a solar PV or like a, you know wind turbines which are a hundred percent renewable. Or, like, uh, or whatever, they, they can be considered to be renewable if their seasonal performance factor uh, goes above a certain threshold. And, and this is what we mean that like a part of their, of their, of their, of their delivered heat or their delivered, their delivered cooling energy can be considered renewable uh, if they can, ma if they can beat the primary energy factor in, in the country typically. And this has changed over time in EU directives where they, 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 you can con be considered in part renewable if you go above a certain threshold. Um, and there's a maximum but that's threshold. that's in Ireland, eh? that's, that's Irish or is it European? It's in European legislation as okay. well. Like if you look at the yeah. European and it's, it does, it, what, what they'll do is they'll calculate a, an SPF based on one, um, uh, divided by the actual um the one minus the efficiency of the grid you know they'll actually use the efficiency of the grid excuse me i'm just trying to figure out the numbers here but basically they'll use the efficiency of the grid to give you a to give you a, a minimum spf and this is this has been typically used for like a heat pumps for example so it's a, it's an equivalent to, uh, uh, what we what we mean by that is that the the part of the ventilative cooling system is is is, is efficient as such that it, that it actually should be considered uh, renewable yeah, yeah, it, it, it's a different way of thinking, and I think we need to get used to it. That's, that's <laughs> okay. And 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 for Maha, uh, can you elaborate on the designers' perceptions of the existing early stage design tools for assessing uh, ventilative cooling and their suitability, how they might be improved? Okay, so 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 for the designers' perceptions of early stage tools, um, mm -hmm. so architects. At the early stages, uh, you mostly use hand sketches or the information they already know, such as their professional experience. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes hand calculations, they, are, they just make hand sketches and they just draw the air flows by their hands. Uh, or they use very simple tools such as cl for climate analysis, such as uh, Sun Seeker. So mm -hmm. at the early stages, they are just looking at how the building is located and what is the climate options. Uh, but as we did, as far as the mechanical ventilation uh, consideration is concerned, architects do not 
engage in with the tools at all. But from the engineer's perspective, uh, as far as the early stages, to, uh, early stage tools are concerned, I think they use Excel templates for that. Or mm -hmm. sometimes they want to see which rooms are overheating in the building design. So they don't see that how many tools or, or, or they don't have access to uh, early stage tools that can provide information about the room overheating at the very early stage. Mm -hmm. Such as, such as uh, IES can tell you about the overheating, but IES is a detailed level tool. It is not mm -hmm. an early stage tool. So, no, so there are a lot of practitioners that don't use it at the early stages. Mm -hmm. And, and maybe a follow-up question by myself. Do you have an idea if if they know about uh, the ventilative cooling potential tool that was developed within Onyx 62? Um, that is something for the early design phase. Yeah, for an engineer, I think. Yeah. So I I did not ask this question from them uh, when I was uh, when I presented the list of software tools. Mm -hmm. I just presented a huge list to them, and ventilative cooling potential tool was was not part of it. Oh, that's a pity. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, that was not part of it. Yeah. <laughs> But also, uh, the BC tool is uh, designed from a European perspective, is it? Is it? I was targeting Ireland and the United Kingdom. It, uh, it, it's international because you can include the weather files you, you want. Yeah, so. yeah. yeah. but I, I, I was talking from a perspective of what is used in the building design practices. So do you think it is used in building design practices at the moment? Um, uh, yes, I know some practitioners are using <laughs> so, question to you. Maybe you, know, so, yeah, you, you that's did why, a survey, so you did a... Uh, so yeah, that's why I think that is why I, we did not include it in the. Okay, and then I also have a question for you. You did now the the survey in the UK and Ireland. Yeah. Uh, how do you think? How valid are your uh, conclusions, international or for other countries? What do you think? Um. So my, so my, I started off with an architectural design process uh, review in a general perspective. Mm -hmm. So when I was reviewing the overall building design process, I was not targeting UK and Ireland only. I just was looking at how okay. buildings are designed in general, you know. So I did look into Royal Institute of British Architects template for building design and I used Ireland's as well. But I have my own experience as well. I'm from Pakistan. I have an architectural engineering degree. So I, that was like a general conclusion. And mm -hmm. that was presented to buildings and design practitioners in Ireland and the UK. So from that perspective, I think building design uh, more or less is uh, is is happening on the same principles. Mm -hmm. you know? Yes, I agree. Yeah. So, yeah. So architects, if, if one architect can work in UK, they can also work in England, uh, other cities, or they can work in Ireland, they can work in Spain. You get what I mean? So mm -hmm. from that perspective, I would say, yeah, I, I think my results have some application uh, globally. Okay. And uh, I, I look at the list of questions. There are no no new questions at this moment. So I think uh, we can thank you, the speakers, and uh, uh, we can can finish this webinar. And I only want to say, yeah, hopeful to see you uh, next week for our next webinar on on window opening behavior. So, okay, thanks. thank you so much. Bye. Thank you very much, everybody.